What we're going to see in this video is something called the support enumeration algorithm. And this algorithm is, is here. And uh, the idea essentially is to identify strategies that make the other player indifferent in all possible places that they could. And, and so the, the important thing is that we consider non-degenerate uh, games. And if we see in a previous, uh, as we've seen in a previous video, uh, that implies that um, a strategy uh, uh, with a given support size has a best response with a, uh, with a strategy of the same support size. And uh, the algorithm then goes that we, we try all possible support size. So if we have a game that's not square, in other words, one set of strategy, one player might have more available actions than, than the other, um, we, we go through all possible uh, sizes of, of supports. We identify all the supports, and then we identify the, the strategies that make the opponent uh, indifferent. Um, we make sure that we have probabilities. And then the final thing is we check that there's nothing better outside of those supports. And so in our, in our particular case here, the first thing to note is that uh, we don't need to consider k equals 1. Sorry, I say our particular case. What I mean is for this example here that we're going to use, that we don't need to consider k equals 1 uh, because there are no best responses um, uh, no, no pairs of, of unique actions that are best responses to each other. Uh, the the first um, uh, uh, row uh, does the column player have what's the best response to the, uh, the 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 first row? The column player's best response to the first row is the first column. The best response to the first column, however, is the second row. The best response to the second row is the the second column. The best response to the second column, however, is the first row. And you can go around like that and realize that there's no single action, so no strategy with support size k equals one that is a, a, a pair of best responses. And so we're going to just start off by writing down the possible uh, supports. So we're, we're going to have um, i equals one and two. In other words, we're looking for strategies where the row player plays both their rows. Um, and that immediately means that we need to consider the column player playing the first two columns or the column player playing the last two columns or the column player playing the first and the last column. So we've got i is always going to be uh, 1, 2. And we need to consider essentially three different cases. j equals 1, 2. Let me move this slightly. j equals 1, 2. i equals 1, 3. And, oops, did I say I? Sorry, that should be J again. And uh, J equals two, three. So those are the, the three possible um, support pairs that we have. Uh, note that the fact that we're only considering I equals one, two is because there are only two rows. If there were more rows, um, then we need to consider all different um, support sizes. And so it's possible, for example, if you have a three by three game, to consider all possible pairs of support of size two. So it'd be three for the, the, the row player, three for the column player, and then also consider the case where both players play strategies with support size three, um, which would be all of them in a, in a case of a three by three uh, game. So we have we have these, these three scenarios um, here, scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three to consider. What we need to do is now step through the other uh, conditions in uh, the algorithm. So the first thing is to find what could the possible values be that make our strategy in, indifferent. So let's, let's go ahead and, and do that and um, move this over. And the first one we're going to consider is if I let me uh, use a slightly different color. I equals one, two, and J equals one, two. So this means that sigma R is uh, sigma R1 and sigma R2, but it also means that sigma C is only sigma C1 and sigma C2. There, sigma C3 is, is zero. And so the equation we get just by directly applying the formula is a half of sigma R1 
minus sigma r2 is equal to minus sigma r1 plus 3 sigma r2. And that gives us that sigma r1 is equal to 8 thirds of sigma r2. That's just what the linear equation would be. There's nothing uh, too strange here. And note what's happening, where these coefficients come from. We're essentially saying that the row player must make the column player indifferent between their two strategies. And so what we're saying is, what is the value of sigma r1 such that the expected utility of playing the first column and the expected utility of playing the second column are the same? And so that's where these, these equations come from, and that's what's written in, in the algorithm. Um, for, for sigma c, we get sigma c1 plus sigma c2 is to be equal to 2 sigma c1 minus sigma c2, which gives us sigma c1 is equal to 2 sigma c2. And that's what we get for, for this particular uh, scenario, scenario one. And um, there's nothing more in the algorithm at, at this stage. That's the value that the utilities would have to take for us to, to have this this scenario, and now let's go ahead and, and consider <clears throat> the next scenario on our list, which is um, i equals 1, 2, and j equals 2, 3. Everything is relatively uh, similar. We're saying what are the rows, what are the values of the row strategy? that make it indifferent between um, the, make the column player indifferent between columns 2 and and three, and we get this equation, minus sigma r1 plus three sigma r2 equals minus a half sigma r1 plus two sigma r2. And so sigma r1 is equal to two sigma r2. And then for the uh, column player, what we get is sigma c2 minus sigma c3 is equal to minus sigma c2 plus zero sigma c3 two sigma c2 is equal to sigma c3 and so for this particular scenario we have these hypothetical um, values and uh, i believe i might have skipped one of the scenarios in according to the order that we were planning on doing them so let's go ahead and and do this final scenario now, which is i equals one, two, that's always gonna be the case, and j equals one, three. And uh, what we get is a half of sigma r1 minus sigma r2 equals minus a half sigma r1 plus two sigma, oh, just realized I'm on screen, plus two, sigma r2, and that gives us that sigma r1 is equal to three sigma r2. We've also got sigma c1 minus sigma c3, so for the column player is two sigma c1 plus zero sigma c3, and sigma c1 equals minus sigma c3. Three that minus sign being important there, and so now if we essentially just keep a hold of what these hypothetical values would have to be, and if we return, oops, did not mean to move that. <laughs> if we return to the algorithm, the the next step is now to say, okay, now we want these things to be probabilities. So at the moment, they're just respected, respective values. So <clears throat> how much more often the, the role player must play a particular action than another particular action. Now it's saying like, for these to be strategies, they must be probability distributions. And so we can go back and um, do exactly that. So if we enforce that we want this to be a probability for this first one, we get the only way this would happen is if 
realizing I'm not on screen. Is if uh, sigma r would be 8 over 11 and 3 over 11, and sigma c would be um, 2 thirds, a third, and 0. The 0 we get immediately, the 0 we get immediately because we've assumed that's the value of of the the support that the third player is not the, the third action is not being play, played and then um the the only uh, uh other equation we have is that sigma uh, r1 plus sigma r2 <coughs> has to be equal to one and then we do the same thing with uh sigma r1 plus sigma r2 has to be equal to one and so we get these values so there's nothing on toward there that that very much looks like a valid probability distribution um, here we get that sigma r must be equal to two thirds, one third, and sigma c must be equal to zero, a third, and two thirds. And um, now my face is in the middle of that one, and it's nothing too strange here but now if we go across to this next one what we get is that sigma r must be equal to three fourths one fourth that's fine that comes from a direct result of of this but this equation here is is a problem because this is saying that sigma c is actually equal to k for any value of k zero and minus k and this is not a valid uh, strategy because we've assumed that um, this is a probability and so these values can't be negative. And so this is um, not a valid strategy. So we're making progress. We've got two strategies that are possible um, best uh, pairs of best responses. What we need to do, however, is um, check that the column player in particular couldn't play their third strategy in this case to get a high utility or their first strategy in this case to get a high utility. So we need to check that these are indeed um, best responses to each other. We've checked that sigma r is a best response to sigma c because there's nothing else that the, the role player could do. And so, so we know that's the case, but what we don't know is if the column player could in fact uh, do a little bit uh, more. And, and so the, the way we, we write down these calculations in this first instance, so now what we go is let's check the best response condition. And um, what we check is we say, what is uh, A sigma C T? And um, in, in the case of two thirds, a third, that's equal to one and one, and so the best response condition is met because the maximum value of everything in the support is the maximum value of, of <coughs> this. So we know that sigma r is indeed a best response to, to sigma c. And then what we need to do is, is check uh, sigma r b, which is equal to 1 11th, 1 11th, and 2 11ths. And here's where we get our, uh, let me move my screen a little bit higher. Here's where we get our first problem, because now we see that this is not a best response to this, because in fact, if they played the third action with any probability, they would get a higher probability, a higher utility than playing the first two. So, so at this point, this is not a Nash equilibrium. I, I should really actually cross that out. These utilities are, of course, correct. These calculations are correct, but this, this is not correct. So we're left with one more um, possibility, which is the one here. So we, we check the best response condition again, and we, we check A um, sigma CT, and what we get is minus a third, minus a third. That's kind of expected. That 
the values don't matter, but the fact that the values are equal, that's those are the equations <clears throat> we solved, and there's no uh, you, no other strategy, no other action to go to. And now, however, if we check sigma r b, uh, the calculation would give us zero, a third, a third. And so indeed, the column player is uh, playing their second and third actions. Those second and third actions give the maximum utility because the third is bigger than zero. So the column player has no reason to deviate to their first action. And so this particular strategy pair is a Nash equilibria. And that is an application of the support enumeration algorithm.